If Godzilla minus one taught us anything, it's that Eastern filmmakers are probably going to end up doing to movies what manga is currently doing to the US comic book industry. The kind of things that make even my most demanding sessions with Tatiana look like a playful cuddle and an early night in comparison. Partly this is because they haven't yet been infected by the postmodern nihilistic malaise that's slowly killing Hollywood, but mostly it's because they're able to produce big bombastic movies on par with anything we can make over here only for a fraction of the price. And it got me to thinking, why? Why are movies so damn expensive now? What is it about our style of filmmaking that results in ludicrous budgets of two, three, or even four hundred million dollars? Well, with this video I want to shed some light on the issue. I'm going to delve a little deeper into the reasons behind the problem, and maybe even make a few suggestions for how it might be corrected in future. So hold on to your wallets as I take you through the five reasons why modern movies are so expensive. Expensive. 1. Actors. There's no getting around this, actors are paid way too much these days. And I'm not talking about the day players and the jobbers who live paycheck to paycheck and have to struggle just to get by. I'm talking about the top level talent, the A-listers, the cream of the crop, the men and women who command such ridiculously overblown salaries that they actually push movie budgets to the point of failure, often with little or no justification as it turns out. Take for example Jennifer Lawrence, the first female action star, first woman to discover fire and the first intelligent life form on planet Earth, who was famously paid $20 million, about 15% of the film's total production budget, for a role in the movie Passengers, even though there was almost nothing to suggest that she was actually a box office draw. And no, I'm not going to count the Hunger Games in this because that was her breakout role, so she had no star power to exploit at the time. She was famous for sure, but she wasn't a box office draw, and that, my friend, is a very important distinction when you're writing paychecks. And it's not like this is a rare occurrence in Hollywood. Arnold Schwarzenegger got paid $30 million for his role in Terminator 3, even though he was clearly past his prime as an action star and hadn't had a major hit in almost 10 years. In short, he was no longer a bankable box office draw, and yet he was still getting paid like one. It's even worse in the present day because as other people have rightly pointed out, we don't even have movie stars now in the traditional sense. Yeah, we've still got plenty of famous actors with all their brand deals and magazine articles, but the days of Hollywood stars who could sell out movie theatres on their name alone are long gone. I mean, let's be real here, when was the last time you went to see a movie purely because of who was in it? And yet, even as the commercial power of actors declines, their salaries just keep increasing. Mid-tier comedy actors like Adam Sandler and Will Ferrell, who churn out low-effort, dog-shit movies and haven't been commercially relevant in years, somehow still command $20 million paychecks. Even Daisy Ridley, who's done precisely fuck all since Star Wars, and practically vanished into obscurity, is being paid $12 million to reprise her role as Rey. <laughs> yeah, money well spent there, lads. Nice one. And then there's The Rock, everyone's favourite lovable boulder who makes insane amounts of money for being in films that nobody can ever remember, who's apparently getting paid $50 million for his role in the upcoming movie Red One. Son of a bitch! <laughs> That is fucking absurd. You could literally make an entire mid-budget movie from his salary alone. There is no way that any actor can possibly be worth that much to a project. And the thing is, it's not just the actors themselves, it's everything that comes along with them. The biggest stars will usually bring along a whole retinue of stylists, personal trainers, personal assistants, personal chefs, life coaches, publicists, and various other hangers-on, all of which have to be fed, housed, and paid, usually out of the production budget. All of this stuff adds up to one simple fact. Most actors are grossly overpaid for what they actually bring to a project, and their bloated salaries contribute to the spiralling cost of most big budget Hollywood films. The only way you could realistically fix this is either put a cap on salaries or a massive reduction in upfront payments in favour of back-end deals, both of which would require a massive overhaul of the entire Hollywood system. Number 2. Production Bloat If you've ever worked at a big company for any length of time, you'll probably have noticed how much waste and inefficiency there is. Bizarre and nonsensical processes that do nothing but create log jams, pointless job titles that are no longer needed, people that have been around for so long that nobody really understands what they even do anymore. It's the kind of stuff that happens in a large and complex organisation, and it's much the same with Hollywood movies. Like, how many times have you seen a film with a list of producers, executive producers, and special consultants a mile long and thought to yourself, what the fuck did all these people actually do? The answer most of the time is, 
absolutely nothing. The thing is, big movie projects are a kind of mutually parasitic relationship. People generally want to be attached to them because it brings prestige and attention and allows them to pad out their resume to make it look like they've done way more stuff than they actually have. On the flip side, having the right name attached to your project can give it the clout it needs to get extra funding, better marketing and bigger actors attached. Either way, all of these people command salaries, regardless of how much work they actually do, and a lot of them can be pretty fucking expensive. And that's not even counting all the pointless made-up positions that have cropped up in recent years. I wonder how many movies have been improved by the presence of intimacy coordinators, sensitivity readers, on-site therapists, or diversity and inclusion consultants. But there they are anyway, and they all cost money. Lots of money. It's too much bullshit, too many layers of management, too many pointless people doing nothing useful, and it all adds up to a shocking waste of time, money, and resources. 3. Too much CGI Again, you don't need me to tell you that modern movies have begun to rely on visual spectacle over character and story, and that usually means CGI. A lot of it. And the reality is that CGI is expensive as fuck these days, especially because most effects houses are in high demand so they can basically charge whatever they want. A good example of this would be the Indiana Jones series. Raiders of the Lost Ark was filled with action, adventure and spectacle, and it definitely resorted to visual effects when it had to, but for the most part it used models, pyrotechnics, stuntmen and real locations for its filming. The result? It came in at a budget of just 20 million dollars. That's about 67 million in today's money. Dial of Destiny on the other hand made extensive use of CGI, just like everything else these days, and combined with all the other factors we've already mentioned, plus a few more we haven't, the production budget ballooned to well over 300 million. That's almost five times larger than Raiders, even adjusted for inflation. And did it result in a movie that's five times times as good? I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> Number 4. Bad writing As the fine people at Film Threat have done an excellent job of exposing in recent weeks, the current thinking in Hollywood circles is that old, pale and male is stale, especially in the writer's room, and the only way to fix the problem is to force them out and replace them with a new crop of younger and more diverse writers. Which is great as far as I'm concerned, because I like nothing more than seeing a whole group of people have opportunities and resources arbitrarily taken away from them and given to a completely different group that someone somewhere decides were far more deserving. It does create a bit of a problem though, because no matter how many boxes these new writers tick, the one that they keep missing out on is experience. For example, it's easy enough to write a big elaborate fight and chase sequence through a crowded city, but an experienced screenwriter would understand that something like that is going to be hugely expensive and time consuming to actually shoot. They'd tailor their scripts based on years of experience of what can actually be done with the production budget available. New writers don't have that kind of experience though, and so they tend to write stuff that's far beyond the scope of what can actually be delivered. The other big issue with people like that is that, well, a lot of the time they're just not very good at what they do. They don't know how to put together smart, complex, logically consistent stories populated by compelling characters, interesting dialogue and meaningful arcs. This low quality writing has the knock-on effect of poor test screenings, which in turn gives rise to… Number 5. Reshoots Reshoots are the fucking bane of modern filmmaking. Yeah, I know it's always been a thing to some extent, and I know movies like Superman 2 and Back to the Future had pretty major reshoots, but they were very much the exception to the rule back then. Nowadays, major reshoots are practically expected, because when there's hundreds of millions of dollars on the line, who wants to take a chance on releasing a movie that tested badly with audiences? Justice League, Suicide Squad, Dial of Destiny, The Flash and The Marvels all had massive reshoots, mostly because of appalling test screenings in panicking studios. And the real problem here is that reshoots basically replicate all of the other problems that are already stacking up, because now you're going to have to hire even more shitty writers to try and fix the problems created by the previous shitty writers, and all that new work is going to have to be checked over by sensitivity readers and the diversity and inclusion consultants to make sure it adheres to THE MESSAGE. Then you have to recall all those expensive actors with their expensive assistants, and work with the intimacy coordinators and the on-site therapists to make sure nobody gets too stressed by the whole thing. Then you have to bring back overworked and expensive visual effects companies to do more CGI to try to cover up the massive cracks in your screenplay. And you have to answer to all the extra producers and the executive producers and the creative consultants who all want to know why you're not returning their calls anymore. <laughs> 
add all of these different factors together and it's no fucking wonder that movies are so expensive and difficult to make now. The whole industry has become so bloated and inefficient, so overstuffed with expensive and unqualified people, so dependent on spectacle and superficiality that they've basically priced themselves right out of their own market. A three or four hundred million dollar movie needs the best part of a billion dollars just to break even and as last year showed us, fewer and fewer movies are capable of reaching that milestone. So what's the solution, you might ask? Don't just complain about the problem, drinker my good man. Show us a way out of it. How can Hollywood studios dig their way out of the financial hole that they've created for themselves? Well, the first thing they need to do is start trimming the fat. Cut down on the number of pointless job roles on set, the intimacy coordinators and the sensitivity readers, the unnecessary producers and overseers who do nothing but clog up production. Stop relying so much on overblown CGI to carry a weak script and bring back practical effects location shooting. Recognise that actors no longer sell movie tickets simply by existing and pay them accordingly, because if everyone does it then they've got no choice but to accept it. Sorry Dwayne, you're gonna have to put that third private jet on hold for now. Also, bring back solid, quality, mid-budget movies that can be made for less than a hundred million dollars, because you can make three of them for every bloated wannabe mega blockbuster that's churned out. That means three times as many chances to have a smash hit, which in turn means less risk with individual projects projects, which results in less studio interference and more opportunities for creativity and innovation. It also allows you to avoid the dreaded pitfall of the safe, generic omni film that has to try to appeal to absolutely everyone because it's the only hope of making back its ridiculous budget, but in reality ends up satisfying no one. With cheaper films, you can afford to target a specific audience and actually appeal to them. And for fuck's sake, start hiring competent and experienced writers again who can actually deliver good scripts, instead of relying on a bunch of meaningless checkboxes that have been promoted into positions they're totally not qualified for, who are going to deliver substandard work that will require a ton of expensive reshoots to fix. Do these things and you might just find that making movies can be easier, more cost effective and more profitable than you imagined. Or on the other hand, feel free to ignore me and carry on shitting out 300 million dollar turds that nobody watches until the money eventually runs out and your whole industry falls apart around you. The choice, as they say, is yours. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.